Good morning. It's a real privilege for me to be able to bring a leadership lesson. I'm here in the UK and I'm sitting in my home and I hope that you are doing really, really well. I have got a leadership lesson this morning coming from Psalm 23. Now for most of us, Psalm 23 is a very familiar psalm. We've read it many times and we can probably recite much of the psalm um, but I think that as women leaders this psalm has got so much to teach us and a particular verse jumped out at me it's verse 3 and I'm reading it from a translation called the message bible and that little phrase that jumped out at me was you let me catch my breath you know, as leaders, we can become so super busy, super busy at other people's needs, trying to solve problems, bringing teaching, um, being involved in so many things, and that we actually neglect our own life, our own spiritual development. Uh, we neglect looking after ourselves properly. And I think this psalm has got a lot to teach us on how God wants us to position ourselves in order for us to be able to do leadership for the long haul. You know, many people that I know have started out well, they've started out strong, but because they've neglected looking after their own lives, they've burnt out. And they've ended up not being in leadership at all. And my heart and my passion is that all of us as leaders learn how to pace our lives, learn how to know when we need to stop and regroup, and how on a weekly basis we need to feed ourselves spiritually, emotionally and physically. I just want to read the psalm to us first of all and then I'm going to bring out a few points that I think as leaders is really going to help us. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back at home in the house of God for the rest of my life. What a beautiful psalm. What beautiful words. And to many of us, they can be just beautiful words. But I believe that God wants to really speak to us through this psalm um, and help us to position our lives in order for us to be able to do leadership for the long haul. You know, the writer of psalm writes in real pictorial language. You know, he's wanting to draw us into this beautiful location, this place of peace and tranquility. You know, we probably learnt to recite this psalm from childhood. But I wonder if we truly have used this psalm to feed our souls. Let's be drawn into the scene that's been depicted. Here, the psalmist talks about a beautiful location where the person who's reading doesn't need a thing. Now, all of us every day are saying, Lord, I need you to do this. I need you to do that for me. But here, this is a place of contentment. This is a place where we truly find what we need in God. The psalm says, God, 
wants to direct us. He wants to lead us. That's not just the big picture of our lives, but that's on a daily basis. It talks about a place where there's no fear. You know, we live in a society where people are just overrun with fear. They are gripped with fear. They cannot function. A lot of people can't function because of fear that they have and they're trapped. But the psalmist is giving us a picture of a place where we can have no fear because we can have total security in our loving Heavenly Father. The psalm talks about a place where God wants to lift our head. We may have a head that is drooping, we may be feeling under pressure, but when we come into God's presence, he says, I'm going to lift your head. You don't have to do it yourself, but it's a place where I will lift your head. It talks about a place where we are surrounded by God's love. Every side of ourselves can be surrounded by God's love. And that's not just for today. That's every day of our lives. Whatever our circumstances, God wants to surround us with his love. And I would encourage you as leaders, meditate on these words. Let them sink right into your spirits. I'm, I'm a very practical person and so when I read something like this, I'm asking questions like, well, what can I do each week? What can I do that is going to make a difference to my life? What is this psalm teaching me that I can put into practice? Well, I want to give you just a few brief pointers um, from this psalm and that will help you on your daily walk, will help you in your leadership journey. The first point that I want to, for us to consider is all of us during our week, we need time to think. We need time to reflect. And that involves us putting time aside for us to just sit contemplate, think and process. Philippians 4 verses 8 and 9 say, summing it all up friends, I'd say to you, you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. You know, our lives are filled with so many obstacles, with difficult situations that we're trying to overcome. And we can so easily just get trapped into letting those negative, heavy thoughts consume our week. And this psalm is encouraging us to set time aside to think about things that are good, think about things that are noble, think about things that will fill our minds with, with goodness, with God's thoughts. And I would encourage all of you, whether it's on a daily basis or just on a weekly basis, set some time aside to just think, process and Think about good things. Think about the things that God has done in your life. Think about the positive things that are happening instead of focusing on just the negative. This is a psalm that will help you to do that if you just meditate on it on a weekly basis. Number two, meditate on scripture. You know, scripture has been there, is put there for our good. And so often we are so busy in our lives and scripture is just something that perhaps we do because it's a discipline. But actually scripture is powerful. 
And I would encourage you, whether it's you writing out scripture and putting it on somewhere in your house to read, but say scripture out loud. Don't just read it. But scripture is powerful when we speak it out over our lives. You know, one of my perhaps all-time favourite scriptures is Jeremiah 29 verse 11. A very familiar verse. But you know, over my life, in different periods of my life, that verse has saved me. That verse has been the verse that I have hung on to through difficult situations. God has got good plans for me. Plans to prosper me, not to harm me. Plans to give me a hope and a future. And I have had to speak that out over my own life. I now speak it out over my children's lives. I believe they've got a hope and a future and good plans. And I, I am praying that over their lives. But you know, scripture is powerful. Use it on a daily basis to um, speak out over your life, your your husband's life, your children's lives, those of you that lead others over their lives individually, you know, you will see that that will be such a positive thing to use scripture and speak it out. Number three, I really believe that gratefulness is an incredible tool that is underused. You know, we can think about the things that we don't have, but you know what? God has provided for us incredibly. You know, if you are eating three meals a day, you are blessed because a half of the world are not doing that. If you have a roof over your head and today you're sitting in a warm home, you are blessed. And you know, on days when I perhaps are feeling negative about what's happening around me, I have to start speaking gratefulness. I have to start looking around my home, thanking God for everything that I have, Think, thanking God for my husband, thanking God for what he's doing in the lives of my children, thanking God for the people that he's placed around me. And I speak out gratefulness on a daily basis. There's probably not a day that goes by that I do not speak out gratefulness because I really believe that is such a positive tool for us to use as women leaders. Number four, the, the psalm is very strong about peace. It, it's a psalm that almost envelops you in peace when you read it. It's a place, it's a location um, where the psalmist is taking us to a place of peace. You know, we live in a troubled world. Um, we live in a world where there's not a lot of peace. Um, but God is offering us as women leaders a place of peace. He says he wants to give us peace that passes all understanding. It says you will guard him and keep him in perfect peace and constant peace whose mind is set on him isn't that just the most amazing verse peace we can live in a place of peace but you know we have to choose that we have to put ourselves relying solely on God we have to feed ourselves daily. We have to work from a place of peace. Instead of at the end of the day going, oh God, I need some peace. We start the day in a place of peace. We say, God, whatever comes today, I am trusting you. I am going to take this situation, whatever I'm facing, I am going to take it to you. I am not going to be disturbed. I am not going to be taken over by a situation. I am going to work from a place of peace. And number five, and finally, I believe that God has created an incredible world for us to enjoy. Um, I don't know if you know the song or the hymn, How Great Thou Art. 
what an amazing song that is and it talks about the amazing creation that God has created for us to enjoy now I'm a person I absolutely love the beach I love going to the seaside I find that such a calming place for me to be now it may not be for you it may be mountains it may be you love the city and actually having time there is such a place of refreshment but I believe that whatever place that you find refreshment in that's a place for you to go um, I can't get to the beach as often as I would like because I live right in the middle of England um, I'm at least two hours from the beach and so I have to find other places. I love to run, I love to walk, and I always like to go in a place where it's quiet and peaceful, where I have time to think and breathe and just take in air. Whatever that place is for you, wherever that place is, you need to find it. A place in creation that you find a place where you can just be refreshed. You know, take a walk perhaps you like to do that with a friend or perhaps you just want to do that on your own but just find a place of security a place where you can be refreshed well ladies i hope that your week is going to be blessed and as you read psalm 23 over again and just meditate on what God wants to say from that psalm to you, may you be blessed and have an amazing week.